Go ahead. Your Honor, Ms. Hambrick has a prepared statement, okay. and I will read it All right. on her behalf. She may still have a comment afterward, but this is her prepared statement. All right, that's fine. Okay. My name is Vicki Hambrick. I'm legally blind, and I have asked my attorney, Joy Kimbrough, to read this statement on my behalf. On June 1st, 1993, I gave birth to Daniel Edward Hambrick. He was my only child and the love of my life. Daniel recognized at an early age that I had a disability, but he was never ashamed of me or embarrassed by me. He loved me unconditionally and constantly said that he would always take care of me. My son was my eyes. Since he's been gone, things have not been the same and they never will be. There is not one hour that goes by that I do not think of Daniel. Even though I have friends and family, there is a void in me that cannot be filled. Nothing and no one compares to my precious son. I am angry, mad, and disgusted, but I pray that no other mother have to endure what I've endured these last three years. I am against this so-called plea deal. I am against the way the state and the defense joined hands to protect this racist, biased, anti-black criminal system. My son was murdered on video by Nashville police. My son has a right, he has a right to a public jury trial. Yes, exactly. I want citizens of this community yes. to render a judgment. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want a backroom bargain where the current DA, the former DA, and their ex-co-worker David Rabin emerged from some country golf club course and tell me that my son's life was worth three years. Exactly. Right. And, and that I'm lucky to get that. Yeah. We all know if Daniel We all know that if Daniel had executed Delkey by shooting him in the back of his head exactly. and in his back yeah. and in his buttocks as he ran away, he would be riding on death row, Amen. waiting on the electric chair. Amen. Delkey lied about Daniel pointing a gun at him. His terroristic hate group, the FOP, which masquerades as a labor union, 
immediately went on the attack and tried to publicly assassinate my son's character with a bunch of lies and innuendo. I've gone through so much during these last three years as I patiently, patiently waited for the day Andrew Delkey would face a jury for gunning down my son. Initially, Night Court Commissioner Evan Harris refused to sign a warrant for the rest of the man who murdered my son. Later, an elected judge decided that a, two, a $25,000 bond was sufficient for a first degree murder indictment. The Ma Nashville Police Department never accepted any accountability. In fact, they allowed a murder defendant to keep his job the entire time, funded by taxpayers until he resigned yesterday on his own terms. In an unprecedented move, the former district attorney testified for the defendant and against the people. Also, other former high-ranking assistant DAs worked behind the scenes to help prepare the defendant for trial against the people. And in the end, the sitting DA lost his nerve. Instead of allowing the jury to render a judgment at a public trial, he settled for political expediency and forced. Okay, okay. All right, so, all right, let's hold this down. I've allowed you some latitude, but we're going to have some order in this courtroom. Do, do we understand each other? All right? And if that person wants to speak out, that person can leave this courtroom. Continue, Ms. Kimbrough. And forced a three-year plea down my throat. I have contempt for this system. I have contempt for this plea. I have contempt for the FOP. And I have a special contempt for Andrew Delkey. May you all rot in hell. Yes, that concludes Ms. Hambrick's written statement. However, there is another statement that I would like to make, again, on behalf of the family, on behalf of the community, the lawyers involved, and the hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of calls I've received in the last uh, maybe 36 hours. Your Honor, we implore you, we beg you, yes. not to accept this plea agreement yes. yeah. is disrespectful. Yes. It's disrespectful to the family. It's disrespectful to the community. Yes. And it isn't warranted. Based on the facts, a sitting grand jury in Davidson County indicted Andrew Delkey on first degree premeditated murder. Ms. Hambrick for the last three years, has been trying to get mentally ready for July 12th. The days have changed over time, but get ready for that trial. That's the only bit, the only semblance of any justice she may receive for the three bullets that struck and killed her son. She waited. The state, the district's attorney's office, 
in violation of her rights as a victim, did not consult her, did not contact her about the plea negotiations they all in secret had to get rid of this case, just to get rid of it. No one consulted her. Your Honor, yesterday about 2.30 p.m., she found out for the first time that the deal had been done, mm -hmm. that it was a foregone conclusion, mm -hmm. that his fate had already been determined. Mm -hmm. They didn't need a jury right. because white men decided. Mm -hmm. They decided what was best mm -hmm. for this community and for Ms. Hambrick. Judge, you have the power. The power is used across the state in other states too. You can reject this plea deal. You can say not on my watch. I'm not accepting this plea deal. And we're begging you. The citizens are begging you, Judge Monty Watkins, to do the right thing and reject this plea deal. It's not fair. It's not justice. It's not justice. Ms. Hambrick is continuously looking for justice and getting slapped in the face and slapped down and treated in an inhumane way. Not even the common courtesy to say, hey, let's talk about this. We want to talk about settling. It was an announcement made to her yesterday. Brother DA said, I've, I've done it. This is what I'm doing. This is my office. That's it. We're asking you now, Judge. We're asking you, you're the last one that we can come to, yes. that we can turn to, Judge Watkins. You're it. Yes. The buck stops there. We're asking you to reject this plea deal. Yes, sir. Please. Like judges do all the time. Yes. In the interest of justice, based on every shred of evidence you've heard, based on the fact that her rights were violated, yes. and based on the fact that 12, well, not on, however many were well, on the grand jury, strangers decided that they were going to indict this man on a first-degree premeditated charge. We ask you that, Your Honor. 